Hey y'all, I'm here. So today I'm going to go over how to set up a local ebuild repo and just an example of patching an ebuild. So things that you'll need, at least for these instructions, eselect repository, repo man, root privileges for pretty much all of it, which is why I'm just starting out in a root shell, and eventually an ebuild to tweak, but I'll show how to just copy one from the main repo. So, I'm gonna start with the extremely difficult and complicated process of creating the repo. So, as root, eselect, repository, create, and then whatever you want to name the repo. Local is a pretty common, pretty good name for a personal local one. It would be a terrible name for one that you want to share on like GitHub or Notabug or wherever, so just sort of keep that in mind. I'm just going to be calling mine local. And yeah, that that is the long complicated process of initial repo creation and just to show that it exists under slash var slash db slash repos there should be a repo with the name that you just specified so pretty much everything else we're gonna want to be in that folder so just cd into slash var slash db slash repos slash whatever you just made. Now this next step is optional, but it can be helpful even for a local one if you want to make diffs or test stuff or whatever, and that's setting it up as a git repo. So git init, just to say that this is a git repo. It'll spit out a bunch of text about default branch names. You can pretty safely ignore all of that. And then git add dot, just to say that everything in this folder should be part of the new git repo. If I do quick git status, you can see no commits yet because it's a new git repo. And changes to be committed, just new files that were auto-generated by eselect repository. Now, before the initial commit, in the likely event that you don't already have just a default git username and email set up for root on your local machine, you're going to need to do git config. If you want it to be for just every repo, you can add the dash dash global flag. But I'm going to not do that. Then the two fields you want are user.name, which if you're setting this globally or if you're going to be sharing this repo like over GitHub or whatever, you'll probably want this to match an actual name that you use someplace, but if it's just a local one, then you can put literally anything and it just doesn't matter. Then the other one, again, dash dash global, if you want it global, is user.email. And again, if this is going to be going to like GitLab or wherever, this should match the email address that you use for that account. But if it's just local, then it just really 
doesn't matter. It doesn't even need to be, like, a real valid email address. So then once you got all that set up, just git commit dash m, whatever you want the commit message to be. So I'll just go with the standard first commit. And if we do git status again, nothing to commit, working tree clean. And if we do git log, you can see that there's one commit, the first commit, from the name and email address that we're just given. Just gonna clear the screen a bit there. So now that you got it set up, you're gonna wanna throw some ebuild or ebuilds in here. I'm gonna use libvirt as an example, but you can do pretty much whatever you feel like making or tweaking an ebuild for. Although I will say starting out, tweaking an ebuild is a lot easier than making a new one. So under this repo, the ebuild will live in a directory path that matches the package atom. And if you're not sure what that atom is, and if it's for an existing package, just do eQuery L, whatever you remember of the package name. And so here I can see, okay, the atom is app emulation slash libvert. So just mkdir slash dash pv. I don't know why I didn't just, like, copy that to paste, but I'm going to do that now. And then, the magic of eQuery L is that it also gives you the current version that you have installed, which is going to be very useful for finding the eBuild to copy over. So, in this case, I know this one's just from the default Gen 2 repo. I'd recommend starting with one that you actually know where you installed it from, just for ease of finding it. So to copy it over, just cp optionally dash v if you want it to be verbose. The path to whatever repo it's in. So in my case, slash var, slash gb, slash repos, slash gen2. Then the atom, which is not still in the clipboard, because why would it be? And then if I do a bit of tab completion, there are two things here that really matter. One of them is the ebuild that matches the version that's currently installed. So I'm going to just copy that one over first. And the other thing is going to be the files directory, if that exists, which for libvirt it does. So yeah, just copy that over to the folder that you just created, so app emulation slash libvirt in this case. Then, like I said, files also matters. I think this uses capital R for recursive. Yeah, it looks like that works. And with copying this files directory over, doesn't hurt to take a bit of a look at what all is included. So like this tempfiles.conf one, I'm probably just going to end up deleting because, spoiler alert, I'm tweaking this to get rid of the temp files dependency. So actually, I'm just going to 
Cut that out. That's my issue. So yeah, as the name suggests, it is just for making the temp files entry to make this LXC related directory, which I, I don't actually have the LXC use flag set for this. So just gonna delete that and be on my way and now at this point it would be a good thing to just get add everything assuming that you did follow the optional step of setting this up as a git repo if you didn't just ignore this git stuff yeah then a commit just like added libvert or whatever and yeah so now that that's all set just point text editor of your choice to the ebuild that you copied over and since this isn't my first time editing an ebuild of this name in this location. Looks like it remembered the last place that I was at, so I'm just gonna start with this change. So this dash g init script line is just making and installing the systemd service files, which since I'm using OpenRC doesn't really hurt anything to have them, but it doesn't really help me at all either. So I'm just going to set that to none. And then... And this inherit line is going to remove the temp files entry. Then just do a search for temp files because it looks like every other line that I need to get rid of actually references that. So this new temp files line is just going to go. And this temp files process line definitely needs to go because I got rid of the file that it's supposed to be processing. And I think those were the only changes that I needed for this. Yeah, it looks like. So just once you've done whatever tweaks you want to make, just save and quit. Optionally, you can do another commit at this point. But that's, that's really the key to get just spam a commit after every time you do literally anything. And you can just revert to any point in a file's history. <laughs> yeah, so at some point after setting up this repo and before installing stuff from it, I'm gonna clear the screen. The wiki recommends having everything under this repo be owned by the user and group portage. If we just do ls-l slash var slash gb slash repos. You can see that that isn't the case for literally any other repo, but the wiki suggests it, so gonna do it. So just go up a directory chown Dash, I think this also uses a capital R for recursive. Yep, V, portage, colon, portage. And then just the repo. And if we do ls-l again, 
you can see that the local repo is now literally the only one that is owned by Portage. And then just one more step to make it actually installable. Gonna go back into the repo directory first. Then just cd into whatever packages directory. Then repo man manifest. Can I clear the screen and throw this to the top? Yes, I can. So yeah, that just to surprise, surprise, create the manifest. So just ls. You can see that now, in addition to the ebuild and the files directory, there is also a file called manifest. And I'm just going to go back to the last folder I was in. That doesn't matter as much. And now, all good to try installing it and just see what, if anything, breaks. So, for this installation, it's best to include the ask and verbose flags, just so you get a chance to look everything over. Then the main thing you want to look for is just to make sure that it has this colon colon whatever you called your local repo here. And it looks like it's indicating in brackets that it's replacing the one from the main repo. Yeah, if everything looks right, then just install. And assuming nothing just crashes and burns immediately, I'm gonna just pause recording while this goes because it takes a bit. Then I'll come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rebuilding. You can see the for tempfiles.d and couple systemd folders. It's complaining that it's not empty as opposed to talking about replacing anything. So given that I just effectively removed everything that was going to those folders from the ebuild, that is a good sign. So a couple little additional checks that you can do after rebuilding just to make extra sure that things went as expected. can do qlist-ir, grep whatever package you just went for, just to make sure that it says it's coming from your local repo. And also if you changed anything with dependencies for it, eQuery D whatever dependency you added or removed should reflect this change. So in my case, temp files, and you can see that none of these are libvert. And just one additional thing to make note of, this isn't just a set it and forget it thing. You do need to update the ebuild from time to time, just make sure that you're getting a somewhat recent version. I haven't really done this long term enough to have any like specific tips for keeping up with new versions of stuff, so best I can say is just keep the repo small until you get the hang of it. Like probably just one or two ebuilds. And as far as the act of updating, the wiki has some notes on how to bump versions, and if there's like a major breaking change from one version to the next that requires actually changing stuff with the ebuild beyond just version number, that pretty much just 
requires that you know what you're doing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it helped, and uh, have a nice rest of your day.